This chart comes from Calculated Risk, which is a really good blog about the economy. It shows all the recessions since the Second World War, all the hard times in your parents' lives and your grandparents' lives, maybe even your great-grandparents' lives. The lines show how steep the job loss was in those recessions and how quickly the economy recovered in each of those recessions. And this is a real crisis. Our economy has been almost unfathomably sick. That's us, that bottom line there. And we have now stopped getting better, as you can see, as that line evens out and flattens out on the right. The private sector is not hiring enough, and the government, instead of acting counter-cyclically, the government is making it worse by cutting its own budgets and laying people off. And this weekend in Washington, this is what the two political parties are meeting about. What they are discussing, what they are discussing, the topic of discussion in this big crisis, everybody go to, everybody go to work on Sunday in Washington, what they are talking about is how to cut spending more, how to make this terrifying picture worse. Joining us now is Robert Frank, professor of economics at the Johnson Graduate School of Management at Cornell University. Professor Frank, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Nice to see you, Rachel. Um, Paul Krugman, uh, writing in the New York Times today, says he's very worried about what he thinks is about to happen in Washington. He says trying to balance the budget in times of economic distress is a recipe for deepening the slump. Uh, do you agree both with that assertion and that worry? Yes, I do. And, and it's odd uh, when John Boehner said we have a spending problem. Uh, he's exactly right that we do have a spending problem, only it's the opposite problem from the one he seems to think we have. We're not spending enough. That's why there aren't people employed today. There's not enough demand for final goods and services. The consumers aren't spending because they're in debt. Businesses don't invest because they already can produce more than people want to buy with their existing plant and equipment. The only actor on the scene with the capacity to do something about that deficit and spending is the government. And we're moving in exactly the wrong direction with it. What about people who say that the government doesn't have that capacity anymore, that the deficit, uh, the, that, the, that the debt level, frankly, is so heavy right now that America is putting itself at a different kind of risk by spending more? It, it's wrong-headed. It's focused on the wrong time dimension of the problem. When we have so many millions out of work, the losses from the output that they don't produce are ten times the size of the interest we paid on last year's deficit, which was one of the biggest deficits we've run in recent decades. It's just a, a, an order of magnitude greater loss to allow people to remain unemployed than it is to take the steps that would get them back on the job. We've got lots of projects that need to be done. We should be doing them. If you accept the premise that that the time frame needs to be adjusted in terms of the way that we prioritize this. That if you accept the premise that long term, yes, the deficit and the debt both need to be tackled, but spending is what's needed now to keep us from going into recession again, to try to deal with this horrendous unemployment. What does that, what does that look like in practice? Is it possible to reduce the long term debt while actually increasing spending now? Of course. I mean, if you look at the, the infrastructure deficit that we have, the, the postponed maintenance, the crumbling bridges and highways, the dams that are at risk of collapse, there's one very compelling example that illustrates the, the nature of the opportunities we face. There's a 10-mile stretch of Interstate 80 in Nevada. If we fix it now, it's in bad condition, we can do the job for six million. If we wait two years, the frost will heave the holes in the roadbed out deeper. We'll have, we'll have to spend $30 million if we wait two years. Today, we can hire unemployed people to do that job. There is equipment sitting idle that can do the work. Interest rates are lower than they've been in decades. Uh, there's no question that we're going to let Interstate 80 go back to gravel. We've got to fix it. We can fix it now for six million. We can fix it in two years for 30 million. The, the spending of that six million today will put people to work and reduce future deficits. It's not a trade-off, it's just shooting ourselves in the foot not to be taking those steps. If the agreement that comes out of Washington this weekend is to cut deficit, to cut spending, excuse me, uh, steeply, do you think that could put us back into a recession? It, it will slow the recovery at the very least, and yes, we, we have every reason to fear that the recession could begin anew.